Ya YouTubers, Taz man here bringing you a new first look. <laughs> and this is an early access, I don't want to say game necessarily, uh, but yeah, it's, I don't know how to just, so it's kind of in the genre of let's say Fantasy Grounds and um, Foundry. However, it has nothing to do with rule sets or anything like that. So it's just the bringing a VTT to you and your players. And it's on Steam. You can get it for about $24.99. Um, and this is going to be a first look. A lot of this is going to be new to both of us. So if I am um, trying to figure something out, it's because I really don't know. I just thought this was really cool and it'd be really neat to kind of get a first impression while we look at it together. I did do just a tiny bit just so I won't be completely oblivious, but there are going to be things that, yes, I don't know, um, and that is fine. So, uh, anyway, this is Telspire, and like I said, it's basically a VTT, and that's it. It, it has no rule sets in it or anything. It, it basically is your map. You can play. You can have people join. And it is in early access if you didn't notice this giant exclamation point here saying you're playing an early access version of Telspire. Expect bugs as well as well as work in progress features and usability. So um, it I believe just came out of being a private beta kind of thing into early access or beta. So once you join, and I'm not going to be able to show you player slash GM view that you've seen in say Foundry and in, in um, Fantasy Grounds because it only lets me launch one, one instance of it. Now uh, as I said it's $24.99. Each of your players, I believe, will also have to purchase that. But the features it gives you is really cool. If if you want to have the a close to being at a table uh, experience, you might have players that like to roll their own dice, you know, and like to have a paper uh, uh, for their character sheet and stuff like that. This is perfect for that. If you're looking more for, I want everything automated, you know, Fantasy Grounds, I, I've mentioned for is a lot of automation in the D&D 5e and other rule sets that it's licensed for. Foundry, a little less automated, but still very, very functional, uh, a very, very cool as far as the functions it does have and, and features. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So once you launch it, you'll be greeted with this volume here. You have a little settings button and the close. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see this little begin. And I created a little test area, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do a new one. Uh, let's go ahead and say create new and we will call this uh, first look. Just like that. So now that we have our first look, uh, we can see the information here. I don't think we can edit any of that. But let's go ahead and this will be our map board. So really quick, just to get you uh, understanding what the interface is. Um, if you have this window closed, you can always click on these little buttons on the sides and you can do it. The first button is boards. These are the maps that you have in that campaign. So the first look is the campaign. This is one of the maps within it. Um, you have campaign boards. You can publish. I haven't really played with that. Um, but uh, that's your very first option here. The next one is your campaign board settings. So uh, you can change the surface color of your board, you know, to whatever floats your boat. I'm just going to leave the gray because the other some of those are really bright. You can uh, set some custom stats for your character. So we could say, for example, actually, uh, yeah, let's use this for maybe the AC, uh, this for HP. And we'll just leave those. I don't think it matters much. You can set what your unit, uh, instead of saying, Tiles, we could say feet, 
Uh, and then how big a tile size, a default tile is a one by one, I believe. Um, I think that's what you would do there. I don't know if you said two, if it would make it so that's a two by two and that's a four by four. Not exactly sure, but these are things we can figure out as we go. The next one is the players. This is if you want to have your players that bought the game and start the, <laughs> the utility, um, you can actually summon them to the board. So I don't know what players are being summoned. I wonder if that's saying summoning just random people. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Uh, you can generate codes. So uh, with the code, basically if a player wants to join your thing, they'll be given a thing saying enter the code here. As you can see in this case, it's I5KPFPH. Uh, it looks like it's case sensitive, all that fun stuff. I'll go ahead and delete that. I'm really wondering if people will start joining my board and it's like, oops. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Um, uh, and then you have your player role. So once you get players in here, you can change their their role. I'm assuming I can't change me because I'm just the owner. That's the admin, full everything uh, for this. Then we have tutorials, and they're actually kind of neat little tutorials. Like if we go look at building and say, oh, I want to, I want to, um, oh, let's just build mode. So it has this little video that will show you the different things. So you switch to build mode by clicking up here to build mode. It drops down this and you can see the tools grid um, right there. And I can't really see what it's mousing over, but if we do that, you'll actually see there's undo, redo, toggle grid, toggle the build flashlight. You'll notice if we close this, I think, uh, do I turn that off? I was doing it earlier. I'm not sure why the little dots <laughs> not moving with me. But K will turn on and off a light that builds around it to lighten it up. Maybe it's because I'm in a different mode. Or, oh, I bet you it's because I don't have this. So if I hit K, you'll see it actually brightens it up. Um, one thing that uh, hopefully gets better is when you are picking something up and you want to mouse over something else, it's kind of hard to tell what you're mousing over because your mouse arrow disappears. Um, and then the final one is atmospheric settings. You can do music, ambient, um, effects. You can set the audio for your ambient to be a blacksmith, uh, a tavern, a busy tavern. Uh, hear that? You can set music to be non-existent. I don't know. There it goes. So you have some basic stuff in here. Like I said, this is early access. It is uh, still a work in progress. Uh, let's go ahead and silence these things. Default is probably silence. Uh, then you also have your day cycle. So this represents your sun. There's night. Here's probably early morning, day. Probably noonish, right? Noon, maybe. And then I'm not sure what this one is. These are presets, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, and I've seen a lot of these things that say something about GM block and things like that. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to have to definitely look that up. Here's our exposure, uh, post effects. I'm really not sure what that is, but that's okay. Uh, so anyway, that's that's your little icons right here. So we can close that. We can always open that up. Um, well, that's a different thing. Uh, over here we have our unique creatures. If you have them set up, I did it in my testing. I created a unique creature. But then this bar over here actually disappeared, and I don't know how to do it. You can have queued chat messages, so you can see chat messages that are going on. Um, up here we have build mode. You have exploration mode, which is where you can just go everywhere you want. Um, you have turn-based mode, which is, you know, with initiative and stuff like that. Um, because I haven't been able to hook this up to a player, 
uh, I can't really tell you what that does exactly. And then it looks like cutscene mode is where you can actually do a cutscene, which is kind of cool. Uh, over here we have, I think this is the build height. So you can see this is the lock on the build height. So if we want to say you can only build that high, you know, then I'm assuming uh, when you're building you can't do that. To me, this kind of looks like sea level. Oh yeah, so if we want to have water and stuff in our map, we can bring up the sea level a little bit. Interesting. Or I think if you dig a hole into the, the map, you'll actually have the sea. I haven't had a chance to really play with that very much either. So uh, these are definitely things I want to play with and look at. Then down here, we actually have all our libraries. So as you can see, everything seems to have these little shortcut keys. tells you exactly what you need to do to, to uh, accomplish what you're doing. So very well done there. Uh, one second. Uh, so yeah, that's very well done there. So we can just hit O for that. There's also a pick an asset. So if there's something out here, this I thought it was a chain at first, but it's actually the dropper tool, kind of like in Photoshop and stuff, where if you have an asset out here, you can just uh, click on this and it'll copy it for you. So then we have all our different tiles. So we have floors, walls, and I'm thinking it goes yeah if you click on these it'll show you exactly what they are stairs a bar a roof um, so on and so forth we have our size thing over here if we only want the if we want to make it nice and small so we can see everything medium we can make it really big so you can kind of see a little more of the details uh, this book I'm not 100% sure oh this is a recent because these are ones I actually used. Um, and then of course you have a favorites. Everything has a favorites nowadays. Uh, how do I get back to just regular? There we go. Um, I think this is kind of a quick area. So we can take these. No, see? So this is what I was talking about with the mouse. For example, you'll see that that little dot is is my mouse uh, and if I want to pick something else I just have to know about where that dot is in order to get it to click on something so that's kind of a little weird uh, but anyway we have buildings uh, right now we're in tavern you can see there's sewers rural uh, palisade nature Morgoth uh, all these different things and they're constantly adding to these things as as uh, as they progress through it's from what I've seen it's been a very very active uh, development process like in April I think they had like four or five updates go out seems like uh, at least once a month you're seeing some kind of update so let's continue on and we'll actually build something in just a minute uh, so the next thing is this little dude. This is for characters. So you can see we have beasts, uh, giant, dinosaur, wild, domestic pets. Uh, we have constructs. We have demonic. We have dragon folk. We have dwarves. We have elementals. And they just have a couple of each of these. What that three dots mean? Nothing. Uh, we have undead, orc, monstrous, humanoid, human, halfling, half orc. So. I imagine at some point they're going to give you a way of getting even more of these things. Um, and then this last menu item here is for uh, just your, so these are like walls, floors, and things like that. This is all your other stuff. You got, you know, if you want to have an outdoor scene, you have a tent. If we hold down Alt, uh, we can rotate it. It'll just point wherever our little dot is. Uh, if we right click it goes away. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Oh that's a lean-to. So there you go you have a nice lean-to something like that. Campfire. Uh, a burning campfire. I wonder if that shows an... An it does have animation. That's awesome. 
Uh, looks like a backpack and thing like that. Uh, we have containers, we have fences, lights, you know, you can have lots of different types of lights. Uh, miscellaneous exterior, miscellaneous interior, nature, signs, uh, traps and treasures. The other thing that, just so you know, the other thing you find under the, the main build, I'm not sure what this thing's called, uh, but uh, this is also where doors are found. So as you can see, there's a various doors, trap doors, and things like that. So we're just going to quickly throw together just a real small, quick, little, uh, for lack of better words, a tavern-like thing. So basically, you can come in here, you just place it, place that one next to it, that one next to it, that one next to it, so on and so forth. Uh, if you make a mistake and want to pick something up, if you have nothing in your hand by right clicking, you can pick it back up, you know, put it down and it kind of copies it like the copier tool will do. Um, if we want to say add a door, I don't know a better way to do this than, than what I'm going to show you. So um, what we need to do, from what I can tell, is we just add a uh, Let's see, four, actually we could do it with one. No, I wanna do it like that. Uh, so we're gonna go add a corner. And once again, we hold down Alt, we can turn it. And so as you can see, it's pretty quick to be able to assemble. All uh, right, where would this be? I need to put that other piece in. I think that's about where it would be. Oh, no, it isn't, actually. Because this... Uh, go here. I was going to put it like that, because this is going to be the door area. Uh, so right-click that one. Let's pick this one up and put it right there. All right, so anyway, uh, the reason I did this, and actually this one needs to go away, so we can take that away, is because we have this little half a wall, which is a one by one. And if we put that right here, and we can use Q and E to rotate, and then the WASD keys to move around, but we can go ahead and put that like that. And then let's go, let's just grab some interesting little guys here. See, this is where I'm terrible at doing the, oh, that's the wrong one, I meant this one. Uh, throw in a nice window. Uh, let's have a fireplace. Let's go ahead and hold alt. Throw that one right there. And let's see, what is this? That looks like blacksmithing tools. Don't necessarily need those. Uh, let's just do a couple more windows. I'll do this right there. Maybe put a window over here, like so. And let's put two windows over here. And we'll have just, oh, whoops, I put that one on top. No, 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 I meant there. <coughs> and finally, we'll just have a regular wall. Right, let's rotate, it'll probably be easier right here so here we have a small little inn and now if we go grab a door uh, let's use let's use a wooden door here alt and put it right whoops that was wrong right there all right, so now we have our little inn. Let's go ahead and go here. And if we go to, say, furniture, we can go grab a nice table with a pig on it. Maybe throw it right here. That'll work. And yeah, that'll do. Uh, so now if we go grab a character, so basically, uh, each person can, I believe, go grab their character if we wanted. Uh, let's look at Faye real quick. I have a fairy. Uh, we have elves. Nice spellcaster here. So now we can put our spellcaster down here. 
Um, and let's have a monster. Uh, let's do... Let's do a nice rock monster dude in here. We'll just have him be right here. Uh, and as you can see, he's nice and big. So, and now if we go in, we hit escape, you can see now we have uh, our character here. And we can use the arrow keys to move our character around, move forward, uh, move back, turn left and right. If we hold alt, we can, or not alt, if it was, wasn't it shift? Why is it not doing it? Let's hide this guy real quick. I could have swore it was alt or shift. Hold on, hit escape. Or maybe we, well, I'm holding alt and that makes us so I can right click and move them that way. But I could have swore I was able to do it also. Oh, well, <laughs> I can't apparently. So anyway, here's your player. They can say, yep, they're, they're coming up to a tavern here and obviously they can't get in because the door is locked. I don't have a roof, so clearly I did jump over. Uh, but if I right click on the door, now you can see I have the option to open it. So now you can go inside. And we can come inside here. And remember where we set HP and health. So if we right click on our character, we can do a couple things. We can do emotes, we can say wiggle, you know, jiggle our little guy, we could twirl him, we could do a surprise throws a little exclamation above them. Uh, if we close that out, uh, we can also light a torch. So here you can see it's bright around them now. Uh, we can disable torch. If it's a bad guy, as you can see, this guy is able to see him because he has a little eyeball on him. But if I were to take him and put him in hide, now you'll see clearly you can't see him. So the GM has the ability to hide them like that. If I hit tab, I go into GM mode and I can actually then click on him and say reveal. And now you can see he's revealed. Um, also as GM, you can also go in and do other things. Uh, I can go in and use some tools. I can change the player permissions. So maybe I can give players permission to use them. I can set the size. So if I want this guy to be giant, you know, I can make him giant. Um, and then if I move him around, it shakes the whole board, <laughs> which is pretty cool, you gotta admit. Um, let's go ahead and face him towards the guy. Uh, so, you know, if they rage, get mad, or whatever, you can do that. So, let's go ahead, we'll shrink him back down. Uh, I think he's about a two by two. Yeah, that's what he was. So you can also pick them up with uh, your mouse, uh, but if you want to hop around, you can do that. Um, then we have uh, the other options here. Let's say we have, <coughs> actually, you know, I never did kill menu. I don't know what that one does, to tell you the truth. Oh, kill creature. I don't want to do that. Uh, we have fly toggle. So now our little guy here is flying and they kind of glide around instead of uh, instead of uh, hopping. So we have a nice little glide feature. Uh, then we also can uh, turn them off. And then here we can see their HP. So we can edit it. We could say, you know, 50 HP and they have 50. Once again, this is where I'm not sure how it shows up on the player screen. I don't know if they have a bar above their heads. Clearly, I don't see his. If I change his to 100 and 100, I don't see any indication of that anywhere. And then, of course, some, so if we do minus four, yes, it does do damage. Nice. So now put him back at zero. Or whoops, no, we need to add four. It'll let, so if I go higher, does it do temporary health? Yes, it temp I guess it does. 
So let's go three. That gives us 100 again. And then the stats is actually where we can see those things we did. So we could put AC in here. Once again, I would love to see what this looks like on a player side. Maybe I'll have to go look at YouTubers that are maybe, or maybe Twitch streamers that are actually um, doing this uh, as a stream because it'd be really interesting to see. Holy cow, we're at 25 minutes. Uh, one of the last things I wanted to point out. So we can turn that back off. Uh, one of the last things I wanted to point out is rolling dice. So if I want to roll dice, let's say I want to roll my 220s, right? The one thing it doesn't seem to do is have advantage, disadvantage. However, I guess that's more of a 5e d20 type of rule set. But you can, if you need to set up dice, if I right click, I can take it away. But let's say I need to do... Uh, let's do sneak attack let's say we have 3d6 we can actually put them in this little thing here and then we just click on this right here and we can throw them around and it'll automatically tell you what all them are and this it doesn't give anything from what I've seen where you can do a modifier or anything like that the dice will stay here until you dismiss them uh, you can actually pick them back up and it will always keep them in a group so it knows that those were a group and it will keep them in a group so if we have other ones like let's say 2d8 someone else is rolling 2d8 and someone's rolling 4d10 something like this uh, <laughs> they went outside the board it keeps track of all these different things and if I say okay there, there's just too many dice uh, you can always right click on it and say remove just like so. If you're the GM, you also have the option to right click, click on GM tools, and you can request all the dice to be cleared. So uh, there's that. Um, I think, oh, there's a, there's a couple other things. I'm gonna move our little guy out here real quick. Boop. Like a show. Uh, you also have a couple other things. This I'm not 100% sure. There's place marker, block. I'm not sure what this means. I need to look into that more. But uh, hit escape real quick. Oops, not escape. Right click or tab or something. There we go, tab. Uh, so we have rulers. So this is really kind of cool because if you want to say, yeah, I'm casting fireball and it does, you know, uh, does a block of, what is it? Actually, I guess this wouldn't, these would be five feet each. Uh, but you know if we say that it does this big of a radius damage or whatever you can actually lay it down it doesn't actually have anything right now that I can see where it will know that this is going to be a fireball or anything like that like I said it's not rule, uh, rule set specific in any shape or form so uh, you can do that you could also you know if I'm doing a cone uh, I can hit I can go ahead and hit cone here Hit escape real quick so do a cone and let's say she's gonna shoot so I can do this you know it goes out five feet uh, and then it's like 45 degree angle something like that so we can actually do that and it'll give us an idea of you know what's within that cone then of course lightning you do that where you know here's a lightning strike or if you're moving around you could figure out how far you're moving look how cool that looks it bends I wonder if you can make it bend. <laughs> no. So, uh, and then, then once again, you can't actually, you know, once you place this, the the token isn't going to follow that path. This is just so you know, okay, yeah, I can make this weird, weird movement here and then turn off the thing or, or whatever and then move to the destination because you know how far it was or if you're shooting lightning or something like that. <coughs> all right so anyway uh, this is just a real quick video it looks like it's gonna be just about 30 minutes long um, oh I forgot there's also this role player thing I don't know what that really does and I don't know where my icon went when I do that but it likes to disappear um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed
I think this is really cool. Like I said, it's not really foundry. It's not really, I, I couldn't even compare it. I couldn't say which is better, you know, uh, Telspire, Foundry, uh, Fantasy Grounds, Roll20. You can't really do it because this is not designed for that. This is basically just being at the table and um, you having your, your assets and, and your map and everything like that. As you can see, you can have pretty darn big maps <laughs> and you can bolt you can build up multiple layers you know we could put stairs in here um, showing high height layers I believe and it has lots of really cool functionality which uh, I'm pretty pumped about um, so if you have an extra $25 laying around I would definitely uh, go pick it up uh, like I said they're being very very productive. I mean, they're. Did I say exit completely? I don't remember. I, I just wanted to. No, no, not desktop. I wanted to go to the main menu. Um, but like I said, early access, but it's looking really cool. It has a lot of potential. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, Discord, check or follow me on Twitter, check out my Discord and my other channels. And that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.